and taking on two of last year's semi-finalists in Chris Day and Sean Storey. It's going to be a dry opening break though. Sarcastic thumbs up from Jonathan. So, just in case you need a refresher, it's the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup. We've got four pairs here tonight. They'll all play each other in a round-robin format. Top of the table come the end of the night. We'll make it through into the second stage of the competition. They'll all play each other. How the matches work themselves is we'll have one frame of scotch doubles, which means alternative shots. And then each player will play a singles frame. Singles frame again, fourth frame will be scotch doubles, fifth and sixth are singles and a final deciding frame, should it be required, will be on the scotch doubles format. Matches are 20 minutes long or race to four, whichever comes first. Tough shot that one for Sean. Two Robertses come from the black ball side of the game. It's a slightly different rule set, but as we've found over the course of the last few years, that doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. Not when the game's open and you can just go go for the finishes. It's just a, the odd choice here and there. And look at that. They played a, a proper international rule shot there. It's not a foul. It's just loss of turn using their ball to pop their opponents. In an ideal world, Liam would have loved to have nicked that behind the red and snookered Chris and Sean, but still not left much on for Chris Day. Might be full-blooded here. It is. Great effort. And they may well have hidden the white at the same time. That's very clever. I thought they had taken the plant on. They might have to go all out, but put the cue ball in a sensible place here. Yeah, tap of the table from Rapid Roberts, who he does play very, very quickly. Clear is in the name. Talking about this red into the left centre pocket, it's very tight. Even if the reds weren't there for it to go through, it would be very tight. I'm not sure they've got anything else. Hard to find a hiding place now with a yellow over the bottom right-hand corner. Maybe forced into this one. Great effort, what a good pot. That is brilliant. Now they can start to plan a route. One really awkward ball below the left-hand centre pocket. One in the triangle area, also half awkward. So work required. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. Back to the left centre again as they punch in shot to the top left. Good shot that from Liam. The red on the left hand side does double. They don't like doing anything else with it. Oh, that's very clever. Very I was, good. I was wondering while he while he was looking at that angle. Because he looked absolutely straight on that ball, playing it off the yellow. Opens everything up. Expecting these two to go quite well tonight. I am now. <laughs> the way they're starting here. This is excellent. Yeah, they've, they both had very good seasons last year. Winning competitions at a, at a good level. They are absolutely no mugs. And they come in tonight with zero pressure on. They're not expected to go through tonight. They've got one of last year's semi-finalists in with them. They've got a bit of a added extra spice with Kyron playing as well. But for many, they'll be second favorites in this group. They're trying to fly under the radar, but with a finish like that, it's gonna be difficult to do. Excellent start for Liam and Jonathan Roberts. I really like that visit to the table took their time, worked out the opening shot or two, and once it was open, they did not hang about. They didn't need to overthink it, just fly through the visit once the work was done. 
What a statement to start tonight off that was. Yeah, that was aggressive, but it was controlled. Most importantly, it was absolutely excellent. Cubal straight in. Disappointing break from Sean. Who is the highest ranked player in action tonight? Immediately a disappointing break. And what a lovely layout here for Liam to make it 2 0. Nothing in the way. Connections are very good. Assuming, I was assuming the red above the eight ball does pass into the left center. I think it does. The overhead looked like it didn't. Oh, we're not going to get that far. So that's not for now. Disappointing that, especially after the opening visits to the table. Yeah, it was one of those that if that can't give you confidence, not much will. Trying to pinch a bit of that pocket, try and pot it on the thick side. That's disappointing for Sean. Tricky layout to start with. That has not developed anything. I guess you can say the only saving grace is if he wants to go tactical here. At least he's blocked a red or made it hard because it might still go long. Looks like he's trying to cut this in off the yellow. No, just playing safe. It did look very, very thin, which is why I was surprised. But just turning the table over, really. And the reason he's played it off that yellow, I said that red might go long. He's just put that yellow there so they, it doesn't make to make sure it doesn't. He probably would have played a breakout shot rather than playing on it anyway. there in the corner Jonathan on his feet even the singles frames players teammates can, can get involved in the sense they're allowed to talk to them they're allowed to give advice ordinarily in singles play it's, uh, it's a foul it falls under the category of coaching but all permitted tonight even in some local leagues in, in doubles and in team matches it's uh, you're not allowed to have that sort of interaction, but I think we absolutely welcome it. Love all the, to see all the conversations and the different ideas back and forth. He's worked himself into a tricky place there. Foul. Yeah, that's pretty poor. It was going to be a poor shot anyway because you weren't going to be leaving anything safe there. You were leaving the frame on, opening up those two yellows. It's the last thing you wanted to do because the yellow that's by the right centre pocket just isn't a bad ball because the other one's there. It's easy just to play off it and it pops open. So, yeah, poor choice of shot and obviously the execution wasn't the greatest either. That's not a bad shot from Sean. He actually won't mind potting both there. Won't affect him in any way. He'd have initially, I think, liked to have had it stay on the table, just give him a few more options, but he's, he's plumb perfect, really. And just make sure you get past this red. Don't play for the gap above it because then you've got the wrong angle. So you're going to have to get past it. For those wondering what the foul was for, he must hit a cushion after contact. And that's exactly what Sean Story's done there. He's hit the cushion, but it's not come into the pocket. Big miss. No, the opening here from Sean. Big shot to take on early. Sean Story gets away with it. That really was a big shot to take on. Tough one. Get out of jail free card for autopilot. Yeah, 
Just taking a few extra seconds on this one because it's never as easy as it looks. I mean, middle of the table is fine. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah, he's played beautifully. Wanted to avoid the red if he could, and so he has. Yeah, he flicks it. Quarter ball, half ball. He probably puts himself in a bad spot. But going past it was absolutely perfect, and no mistakes from there. Very good indeed. So that will be Sean Story taking the victory in that frame. Squares things back up at 1 1. It'll be Jonathan Roberts taking on Chris Day in this next frame. All the dynamics in play. Who do you like as the breakers? Be fairly relieved, I think, because quite a lot of the clock gone. If they've gone 2 0 down there, they may be uh, in for a spot of bother. But here they are. The pride of Suffolk, Ipswich and Sudbury respectively for Sean Storey and Chris Day, two super players with fantastic resumes. Sean, a former number two ranked player. Chris in the world final as recently as last year. John Roberts' break continues to desert him. Broke dry once and he's been cruelly kicked in off at his second attempt. I mean, that is cruel. Yeah, feel your pain there. Yep. Anyone who's played pool can feel that pain. <laughs> yep. Looks like he wants the reds. A red on the left-hand knuckle. Pretty sure that's okay. And the rest are fine. That hasn't helped the situation, but hasn't really hurt it too much either. Yeah, it can possibly look to leave it as a double. Got options into the left centre next, you'd think. It looks like a tight shot, this. It, it, that's tight. Oh, it flew in. Trick of the camera. Yeah, he was okay. He was okay. And the one he just bumped a little bit more awkward, he now bumps into play. There isn't too many issues here. In an ideal world, right centre, top right corner would be your last two balls before the eight ball. So if he can land nicely on one of these two reds together, which he has, this should be pretty routine. Yeah, that's actually a really nice little angle, isn't it? Very, very nice. It's those sort of situations where a, a player kind of floats it back into that area thinking you've got right centre or one of these two, but you know, it is worth kind of planning your route from the black backwards so you know that right centre, top right corner, then the eight ball, all sort of. So then you're being precise and you have a backup plan, really. Just about straight enough. Just left himself hampered. If he's not hampered, he's fine here because he'd just screw across, bump into the yellow and he's out. If he lets the cue ball drift below the yellow, then he might be too thin on the next one to hold on the red. Missed it. Oh, just slides it in. And that's as played. OK, I mean, it was as far off the side of the pocket as he could get, but if he hits the centre pocket there, the cue ball's another foot to the right. Potted it as thick as he dared. Didn't potted it any thicker. Yeah, just, just dropped in. Looking at that replay, he may well have, if he potted it centre pocket, may well have flipped the yellow and that could have snookered himself. So, very good shot. Oh, and after all of that. This is the last red. An opening. Big moment in this match. That was for 2-1, five minutes to go. 20 seconds as well. We'll see the introduction of the 15 second shot clock. Don't think it will disrupt a man who goes by the nickname Rapid, but I don't think he'd be human if he wasn't a little bit thrown out of his usual kilter by a 15-second shot clock. 
He's just trying to work out how he deals with the two yellows together. Does he have enough angle now? I think he has. So you're punching into it. Always going to be on the yellow to the bottom left. Having his extension for the first bit of the 15 second shot clock was handy. It's the key shot. Lovely. Played that lovely. Now you've even got a little bit of an angle to come out with the cue ball as well. And the rest of the finish is waiting. Could have done with a bit more on that one. I think he's okay. Keep all doing a little bit more travelling than would be ideal, but yeah, and now a slow. He's going now, into the eight ball here. Yeah, and if he goes into the full ball or left hand side of it, he's causing a headache for himself. Oh, he can't pot it at the same time. Wants it to stop. <laughs> oh, well judged. 2-1. Excellent from John Roberts in the end. And the Welsh boys have brought a bit of support by the sound of things. The two lads from Wrexham with an excellent start over some of the competition's favourites here. Going along very, very nicely, both in the winner's circle last year on the Black Ball Amateur Tour. So much so that Liam himself is actually actually turned himself professional on the black wall side of things as well, following a really good 2022. So the pair of them are in good nick. They will have quietly fancied themselves coming into tonight. Tough moments here for Chris Day. He knows he should have won that frame. Now we have to forget that and break and try and get something going here in the scotch. Hammers the break, gets a ball. That's the key. Good chance here. They've come out well. 3.30 left on the clock. Plenty of time. I'm surprised they've not taken the red at the bottom of the table here. It's not, for me, a great last ball, because if you land high on it, eight ball doesn't go left centre, and you do not want to let the yellow bottom right-hand corner become a problem ball. And on the first shot they had here, they could have just tracked down, taken that red, and then had a choice of balls up the table. And I think leaving that one could come back to bite them. Himself slightly awkward here already. Good recovery. Helps him if the, the red went bottom right hand corner, but I don't think it does. Making this tricky. Played that lovely. Keeble's doing some mileage here though, and they've you want to get the next positional shot right to make getting on the eight ball comfortable enough. Oh, oh wow. It rolled off. Wow. Huge roll off. Yeah, I feel sympathy for you there, Sean. Goodness me. Wow, that was incredible. Watch this. Oh, wowee. So that's the breaking area where the balls get racked up. A little something on the cloth there. Made it go sideways. That's a very clever shot. It's the one cushion there. I think so. I think you can just get by the eight ball. Chris Day will probably go close to this. Wasn't far away. Good effort. He's not left himself a bad cue ball though. It's not over just yet. The Roberts pairing have got to find a shot here. 
not a bad result for Day and Story. Big shot. Well, 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 they've got the snooker. They've run the cue ball far enough. Story and Day trying to save a draw. Watch Sean lining up. Oh, it was a good effort. Yeah, good hit, but that's 20 seconds gone for them. They're going to have no more shots here. Yeah, that's the match. John Roberts just needs to knock this one in over the hole, and that will do it. So 2-1 to end our first match. John Roberts and Liam Roberts with the opening victory.